first thing that I've got to say is that I love you all. And I'm so grateful that I got to run this campaign with you. So proud of everything that every one of you have done. Um, especially those who were here at 5 a.m. setting up these signs. Those of you who've been knocking on doors for the last seven months in Iowa, making phone calls, inviting people in to their own democracy and making sure that they have a voice, that they can stand up, that they can be counted. Those of you who came from other states to be with us here today, um, who've been there for the entire distance from before there was a campaign for the presidency, I just want you to know how much I love you and how grateful I am for you and how proud I am to be in this with you. I also want to address those who could not be with us here today in Des Moines who are watching from home. Um, I want to say to Amy, who's in El Paso right now with Ulysses and Molly and Henry and could not be with us today. This is the decision that we made so recently and so reluctantly that she can't be here in person. And she just texted me and she said, I wish I was there. And I said, Amy, you are here. And uh, everyone who is not physically here but has been part of this campaign and is a reason that we ran in the first place, you are here with us right now. You will always be with us and I will always be with you. This is a campaign that has prided itself on seeing things clearly and on speaking honestly and on acting decisively. We have to clearly see at this point that we do not have the means to pursue this campaign successfully. And that my service will not be as a candidate nor as a nominee of this party for the presidency. I entered this campaign because I believed that we had the ability to bring together a very divided and highly polarized country in the face of the greatest set of challenges that we have ever known. And the chief amongst those challenges is the fear that grips so much of America today. The fear that our current president wants us to feel about one another and about ourselves as a country. The very real fear that far too many live under day in and day out. And the fear in public life too often to do the right thing because it may go against the political wisdom or the polls or the politics or our prospects in the next election. But here's what we have all done and what we all decided to do. We chose in the face of that to be unafraid, to say what needed to be said, to call things by their right name, and to go everywhere, especially those places that have been counted out or forgotten or taken for granted, to bring everyone in to the solutions to these challenges and our democracy as it faces the test of all tests. We were the first presidential campaign to propose an ambitious plan to confront climate change before it is too late. We were the first campaign to propose the boldest set of solutions to the epidemic of gun violence in this country. Unafraid to confront the conventional wisdom or what was possible to say in the public sphere for so many years and decades before this one. All of us, you, made this possible and made the change that our country and especially our kids deserve possible. We talked about and we elevated the plight and the promise of immigrants and asylum seekers and refugees and the communities in which they live, including Des Moines, Iowa, and in El Paso, Texas. Nothing to be afraid of, everything to celebrate. An example for the rest of this country about who we are at our best. We've also, together, connected the dots to help this country come to the conclusion about the costs and the consequences of Donald Trump. The racism, foundational 
endemic, systemic in America, brought out into the open during this administration, and directed along with a violence that is unknown in any other country on this planet. Here, where we lose 40,000 of our fellow Americans every single year to gun violence, he directed that at the most vulnerable and the most defenseless. On August 3rd of this year, 22 killed in El Paso, Texas. We helped this country to understand that that did not happen by accident, but instead by design. And each one of us, knowing that going forward, will be culpable in this violence and in this racism, unless each of us stand up to be counted, stand up against this president, stand up for the best interests of this country, and have the political courage to do what is necessary while there is still time to act. Every single one of you should be proud of your ability to do that, to change the conversation in this country, to bring the wisdom, the genius, the intelligence of all of our fellow Americans, regardless of what party they belong to, where they live, who they love, to whom they pray, how many generations they've been in this country, or whether they just showed up today. If you're here right now, you're in the right place. If you're in America, you're in the right country. You will be part of our success. And every single one of us here, and all who are part of this campaign, made this happen. Though this is the end of this campaign, we are right in the middle of this fight. I will do everything that I can to support the eventual nominee of this party with everything that I've got, and I encourage every single one of you to do the same. I will still be part of all the causes that brought us here together in the first place, whether it is ending gun violence or confronting climate change before it is too late or addressing the structural racism in America or making sure this economy works for every single one of us, I will still be part of the fight and so will you. Because I know that you are not here and I know that you are not part of this campaign for me or for this party, but for this country that we love so much for this country, which we are going to come through for now at its defining moment of truth. And I will tell you this, the very last place that I got to visit before being here in Des Moines as a candidate, just as an American, as a human being, was Newtown, Connecticut. And I listened to a community and to families who had been through so much, and today, almost seven years later, show so much courage and give us an example for the way forward, not just when it comes to safety in our schools or against the gun violence that we see too, too often in this country, but how we as Americans can make it. And so many of the best ideas and so much of the courage in that room came from the very youngest among us, including those who were too young to vote. And that is how it has always been in this country. At these defining moments of truth, it is the very youngest. In World War II, the 17 and 18 and 19 year olds landing at Normandy on the 6th of June 1944 to make this country and this world safe for democracy. On the 1st of February 1964, students from North Carolina A&T sitting down at the lunch counter at that Woolworths in Greensboro, North Carolina and having the audacity and the courage to order a cup of coffee and after they were denied because of the color of their skin showing up every day thereafter until finally they integrated that lunch counter helped to shock the conscience of this country inspired other young people around America and produced the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Those young students at Kent State in 1970 who knew that we should not be at war in Vietnam and stood up against that and stood in the line of fire, four of them giving their lives. It has always been the young people of this country willing to serve, to struggle, to sacrifice, who have brought us to our senses and brought us to a better place than we would have been otherwise. 
Let us allow ourselves to be inspired and led by them right now at this moment. Let us ensure that each one of us does all that we can to make sure that we are worthy of them and the generations that follow. That is why we are in this fight. That's why I will stay in this fight in whatever capacity I can. And why I'm so grateful that I was in this fight as a candidate with you. I want to tell you from the very bottom of my heart how grateful I am, how well served I was by the members of this team, those, those who are on the campaign staff, those who never drew a paycheck and at their own expense traveled this country, brought other people in, believed in this campaign and in this country and made sure that through the courage of their convictions and their willingness to act on them, this country could realize its potential and its promise. This has been the honor of my lifetime. I love you all and I know that I'll be seeing you down the road. Thank you so much. And I'm with you. Love you all very much.